Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and welcome to part two of mucinous cystic neoplasms of the pancreas. What I'd like to do in this session is show you a number of different cases building on the knowledge we had before so that you could recognize MCN in practice. Vague abdominal pain, remember we mentioned before 20% of patients are asymptomatic and 80% of patients are indeed going to be symptomatic. We talk about the lesion is well-defined, classic body of the pancreas near body tail junction, sharply marginated, and that was an MCN. The lesion at surgery had low-grade dysplasia. CT it has a challenge. When you see real thickened septations and nodularity, it's easy to say high-grade dysplasia or neoplasm. If you only see a cystic lesion, it's more likely going to be low-grade dysplasia, but you really can't be positive of that. Now, seeing a calcification in this case and seeing a thin septation, it's more likely that's going to be a higher grade dysplasia or even cancer. The presence of calcification tends to be a worrisome sign. Only a small percent of MCNs have calcification. Here's that same lesion with a few other visuals, very nicely showing you the calcification. Maybe a thin septation, but little else. Another case, well-defined, body tail junction, sharply marginated, the most subtle suggestion of enhancement, which is probably simply some compressed adjacent pancreatic tissue. There it is shown very nicely on the 3D imaging. I would not confuse this with a cirrhosis adenoma. I would not confuse this with a neuroendocrine tumor. I could think about an IPMN, but again, the lack of pancreatic duct dilatation or even pancreatic duct communication makes an IPMN extremely unlikely. And the patient is a middle-aged female. It's an easy diagnosis, MCN. And here it is again, just another view in the coronal perspective, which is very helpful. And at surgery, this had low-grade dysplasia. Another example, a larger lesion, but again, well-defined, water density, sharply marginated. The rest of the pancreatic gland looks normal and enhances normally. There it is again in the coronal view, nicely shown on the 3D. Look at the density. It looks very much like the fluid in the stomach. And that was a low-grade dysplasia, again, in a 40-ish-year-old female. Another example, what about this case? Now, left upper quadrant fullness, you can see why, but here I have a large cystic lesion. And if you look about 3 o'clock, there's nodularity in the wall of the lesion. There are multiple thin septations, and this is substantially larger. Now, when I first look at this case, I would have said a cirrhosis adenoma, but the nodularity in the wall is somewhat concerning. We also know for sure this lesion is going to be resected, but compared to the lesions I showed you before, this is a really large lesion. In fact, you might wonder, is this really coming from the pancreas? Could it be retroperitoneum? Could it be kidney? Could it be adrenal? Could it be spleen? But of course, we look carefully and we know it's pancreas. You can see on the venous phase, the septations, the nodularity, the wall thickening. This is an appearance of a mucinous cystic neoplasm. Again, it's a very important one. When you see this size and the septations and nodularity, you know this is either high-grade dysplasia or malignant, which becomes very important in terms of planning surgery and in terms of planning treatment. And at surgery, this was high-grade dysplasia. This patient was relatively lucky, but look at the size of that lesion, and you can imagine how long that lesion had probably been there. Another case, again, a very large cystic lesion. You might almost think about a gist tumor coming off the stomach if the patient had already been treated with Gleevec, perhaps. But large cystic lesion, multiple large septations. The patient had nausea and vomiting, not a great surprise. Look at the mass effect on the patient's stomach. Large, again, very nicely, the volume rendering really makes you appreciate all of those septations. It has a really coarse septation pattern, a lot of thin septations. I would have considered cirrhosis adenoma in this differential diagnosis. And cirrhosis adenoma would be an excellent diagnosis. Tail of pancreas, large septations, um, only up to 60 or 70% of calcification. There's no calcification here but this ended up being a mucinous cystic neoplasm. So again, the overlap to cirrus is uh, high in this case, but again, this patient will indeed get surgery. Now this patient, unlike the last one who had high-grade dysplasia, this patient had invasive carcinoma 
in an MCN. So again, that can be difficult from a radiology perspective at this time. So let me show you a few more cases. Look at this one. Cystic lesion, well-defined, sharply marginated, in the body tail junction. There's coming off the gland. When things are eccentric, I often think about lymphoepithelial cysts, but lymphoepithelial cysts are lower density, and MCNs, although they're commonly sort of in the center of the gland, can also be eccentric, and this was an MCN. Again, location is good, the density is good, but they can be eccentric. This was resected, of course, and had low-grade dysplasia. Another example, abdominal pain. This is larger, but you're worried because it has the septations. There's glandular atrophy and perhaps the suggestion of mild ductal dilatation distally. The 3D again showing the septation better. And in this case, it looks like a nodule within the septation. You know this is concerning. You're highly suspicious, not only of an MCN, but this could be high-grade dysplasia or malignant. Again, some more views of that very nicely showing the septations. As I mentioned, the venous phase may be better for showing septations than arterial phase. It also is better for showing mural nodules. And interestingly, despite the aggressive look of this lesion, it was a low-grade dysplasia. Again, making the point that we do have a challenge in being able to predict dysplasia. Another case, again, that same area, body of the pancreas. Sometimes the lesions, you could swear you've seen them before. Here at near 12 o'clock, there's a calcification. Again, that makes it very easy. Here you can see some displacement of the splenic artery. There's no vascular invasion. Typically, you see vessel displacement simply because of mass effect. Again, it's one of those cases where there is the most subtle rim-like enhancement, which is simply normal pancreas being compressed. And this was an intermediate grade dysplasia. Again, this is one you would have favored a low grade dysplasia, but again, making the point of the difficulty we have. And I mentioned calcification. When you see calcification in mucic cystic neoplasm, it tends to be peripheral, thin, and curvilinear. But when you see calcifications, you really worry a lot more, could this be a high grade dysplasia or malignancy? So I've showed you a lot of different cases can you accurately diagnose MCN on CT? Again, the things that help you. Middle-aged female, typically body or body tail junction of the pancreas, often larger than 4CM, but can be smaller. When they have thick septations or nodules, especially nodules, they're more likely malignant. And although we'd love to be able to give the histologic grade, low grade, intermediate, or high grade, we typically can't do that unless there's lots of nodularity and enhancement, what we can call it a high grade, but we're not always gonna be right. Again, the age, location, 20% are incidental, but the majority are gonna be symptomatic. And again, EUS can be valuable. Helpful points, location, lack of pancreatic duct communication. The cysts and MCN are usually 2CM in size and less than six cysts present. And again, that ovarian type stroma, which can be suggested by septations, but otherwise you can't tell much. So hopefully I've showed you a number of cases. You're now familiar with the classic MCNs. You're familiar with what can look like the MCNs. And hopefully when you're looking at these cases, you become a better radiologist by being able to suggest to the referring clinician specifically what you're dealing with. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctsus.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.